Run them likes up. I need about 10,000 likes on this video. What's up, Snorridoo crew? Hey, so I literally just peeped the uh the uh trap trap geek. It was the pop smoke video about the Hoovers, meet the woo, and all that. So yeah, so, and this that brought me all the way here with it. Like, ooh, I gotta see this one now. Cause he was talking about some some niggas named the Choos, nigga they G D, and some niggas named the Woos, they uh uh Woo Crip or whatever, nigga. Like GS9 is Crip, nigga. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Bobby Smurt is a Crip. But I thought that nigga was GS9. Hey, bro. Anyway. Let's go and get into it. It's that rap that drill shit don't really drill <laughs> shit, bro. Mm. They say they spinning through the floors. I don't know where they spinning. They getting lost. <laughs> 2K, GDK, nigga. All we invented all, all that shit, nigga. 6K, all that shit. 6K, toast. They know who invented that. With that takedown of accused gang members in Brooklyn, 21 arrests and what's been called. That nigga said 6 straight toaster. That's low key fly. That's low key fly. A reign of terror that left two people dead and four others hurt. And the two street gangs that I'm referring to in this case are called Wu and Cho. They're act. Hold on. They got pop smoke on there. Oh, this the Wu members. Oh, yeah. Hold on. They ain't got Favi on that motherfucker. Yeah. Damn, they got they niggas. They got the niggas' names and everything. Nicknames. Damn, they got chicks up in the, in the game. They deep. They real deep. Actually, umbrella groups each consist of a number of other loosely affiliated gangs that work together they come together basically to fight each other hi what's up everybody we gotta talk about the brooklyn drill scene that's been heating up everybody knows the woo because of pop smoke and the rise of fabio foreign who's been on double xl to fans the woo is a rap collective but Yo. in brooklyn it's one half of this brutal war for territory that's been going on between the woos and the chos and this has been escalating so much that two weeks Weeks before Pop Smoke was killed, NYPD took down 34 Wu and Cho members in Brooklyn. After following them for two years and building a case, they cleaned house. Now with Pop Smoke and Favio, the Wu's managed to take control of the music scene in New York. The brand was getting worldwide recognition. A lot of the a rs at the labels from Brooklyn had direct ties to the Wu, and it got to the point that even the biggest Cho rappers, when they were invited to radio stations, were forced to rap over Wu beats. Brooklyn, we in Brooklyn. Oh, that's disrespectful. Oh, flex playing. Oh, you know who run this shit though? Big GD shit, what? But with pops. Oh, hey, that's disrespectful. Smokes murder. The playing field evens out. The chos are getting more and more disrespectful as they grow in numbers. You got people like Coach the Ghost, who's Pop Smoke's direct rival, signing to Gucci Mane immediately after Pop Smoke was killed, releasing diss tracks poking fun at his death with Wu. Pop, uh, Coach the Ghost, Pop Smoke should have got smoke. I'm done rapping. I'm, t I'm tired of, uh, I'm tired of predicting the future. Three coming, uh, soon, they Rappers can. sending shots back at him, burning Cho flags and fitteds in their music videos, basically as a declaration of war. Bitch, I am not folk. Fuck coach, bitch, I drop Cho. Chevy Brad, I'm the top zone. All this has made for a violent year in New York with the last couple months escalating during the pandemic. Shootings doubled and murders are up by 50%. Now, we're gonna get into all this, but before we do, check out my song of the day. This is my guy, Millie's. Let's go. Shout out, Millie's. But, uh, yes, sir. Shout out to you, my boy. Hope you see this. Hope you don't. I don't give a damn, but hey, hey, hey. Different sets from different gangs in them, and they've been at war for several years now. Lots of viral videos of people getting run up on, shootings in traffic, stabbings, and of course, diss tracks over drill beats. Only in New York can you have Fabio Foreign, a crip, surrounded by bloods, yelling GDK in a music video. Fabio, they don't know if they started with yoga or started with stone that gang shit. And you know that's one thing we don't play with your GDK if you follow your brain split. Now the woos heavily out. Yeah, he told he, hey, he twisted this. He switched his style out a lot, nigga. Number to chose in Brooklyn, and it's all happening in Brooklyn. Brooklyn's a big borough, it's got a lot of different neighborhoods with different factions controlling them. For example, Canarsie, that's the floss, that's where Pop Smoke is from. Big. 
Crip Zone, bed that's blood territory. Flatbush, that's a whole mixture. It's got Crips, Bloods, and Gangster Disciples. And the Gangster Disciples are basically against everybody. GDs in Brooklyn, Evansville niggas started top options, you feel what I'm saying? We got a lot of drama with everybody, you know what I'm saying? So that being said, it's like, people took that term and utilized it in their own way, so calling yourself big ops, I never heard of this shit before, you feel me, bro? They're yeah. small in numbers, they stick together. Essentially, they make up like 90% of the Cho movement with a sprinkle of Crips and Bloods in there. See, gang affiliation really doesn't mean anything in New York because the Woos are made up of Bloods and Crips and their main beef is basically against GDs. Fabio from Mr. Husband's Ever, Big GDK, Top 9, Dot Twirl, shooting anything, spinning, nigga, no time. Now, the Ebbisfield apartment. Shit, they spinning time, nigga. All right, bro. Fuck in Brooklyn is like the stronghold for the GDs. It's been controlled and operated by them for a long time, at least since the early 90s. They are direct descendants of the Gangster Disciples out of Chicago. Their leader was taken down in 2012 and sentenced to 20 years for... Uh, Devon Rodney is alleged the leader of the Folk Nation Gang, which is also known as the leader of the Six Trey Outlaw Gangster Disciple Folk Nation racketeering, attempt murders, and gun raps. His crew was notorious for armed robberies, they did setups through Craigslist, and of course, shooting at rivals. One of their biggest being GS9. Capsule. Capsule. Okay. Okay. Folk shit, nigga. Remember what Bobby Smurda did. He rolled down the one way. Niggas remember what Bobby Smurda did. He rolled down the one way. Free the real lugs. Free GS9, bitch. Look, look, look. Those are the Ebbisfield apartments and some of the younger GDs jokingly saying free GS9, who they were in a big war with since 2009. Around 2014, GS9 and Bobby Smurda was the single biggest act in the country. He was Real. the hottest artist in the city, taking over the airwaves. But with all that popularity, it's impossible not to draw attention to the shit that your crew. Is he gonna get out doing a smarter dance? Why? Why? Is doing, and fans were oblivious. They had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. The New York police created a rap task force called the Enterprise Operations Unit. It's the same one that took down 6ix9ine, Shoddy, and Treyway, who, with the nine Trey Bloods, were affiliated with Wu. They really got hip hop. Oh, see, that's New York, though. That's the birth. That's the birthplace of uh, a rap. They ain't got that where I'm at. They probably got it in Atlanta, in LA. That's about it, though. That's about it though, Chicago. They probably got it in Chicago. They probably got just got a gang unit. But the thing is with New York, bro, you can have a song that's popping in New York, Philly, Jersey. Just all them little East Coast uh states, Jersey, Philly, or cities in city slash in or states. You know what I'm saying? Or cities in or states. But, you know, New York, Jersey, um, Philly, Connecticut, Rhode Island. You have some popping in that region right there. You can honestly make a probably more money than a mainstream rapper, bro. You got to think, New York got 9 to 10 million people in there. Philly got like 2 to 3 million people. Philly got a lot of people in it. Same with Jersey. Jersey got a lot of people in it. And Rhode Island, Connecticut, and all them other cities and states. Sorry. Bruh, you can honestly go platinum with just a song that that's just popping in that area alone. And, bruh, well, the internet, well, it could have been like that back in the early days, 20s, 20s, and I mean, 20 years ago. I said the 20s. 20 years ago, but now I feel like if you get some popping out in New York, you guarantee you're gonna go worldwide. Honestly, get something popping like Welcome to the Party, Dior, you know what I'm saying? You're you gonna get something going, you're gonna get signed and this, that, and the third. Like, you're gonna get some good traction going, and you honestly could make a living doing shows there. Them four, them small venues of 2,500. To a thousand, I mean a thousand to twenty five hundred. Man, you can make a nice living 
6 9 of course, was the pivotal witness who turned state in that case, brought down everybody. They also had wiretaps and informants in place for years gathering intel. The RAP task force also took down GS9 and Bobby Shmurda several years back in a very public case with like a 63 page indictment. There were phone taps, informants, guns and drug possession, guns jamming while shooting at ops on the block, Bobby shooting into a crowd, Bobby shooting at his own homies who owed him $300, Dang. shooting at rival gang. Hold on. On or about June 6, 2014 in telephone conversation, the defendant uh, Devon Rodney, aka Slice, told the defendant Brian Harvey Mishi that the defendant uh, Kill Pollard, aka Chewy, aka Bobby Smurder, was not supposed uh, supposed to fire a gun at a member of his own gang, stating, stating, but he still wasn't supposed to pick up no gun at bro and shit. It was reckless. Bobby's own lyrics directly implicated several GS9 members in crimes they would get convicted for, but the lyrics themselves could not be used in court and was ultimately shut down by the Supreme Court. Nevertheless, the hottest movement out of New York taken down. And while Bobby was standing trial, a high-ranking GS9 member's body was found on the Brooklyn beach Damn. wrapped in plastic bags with duct tape on his face. Oh, uh, Peter Martinez, 28. From Brooklyn was found May 2nd, wrapped in plastic with bags of duct tape on his face, 100 pounds of cement covering his feet, and over 100 pounds of cement covering his feet. Straight Italian mafia shit. This kid's name was Peter Martinez. Allegedly, he owed a lot of people money. He went missing for three weeks, and investigators say that that's where you fucked up at. Why the fuck are you owing niggas money, bro? The perps basically put his feet into buckets and poured cement in, trying to sink his body. But the job was not done correctly, and they let air in, and his body floated to the surface. When Rowdy and Bobby got locked up, the GDs in Ebbisfield took advantage and started dominating the music shit with this rap click called the Blickies. They X out the C in the name Blickies because they beef with GS9 and the G-Stone Crips. And at that time, the Chicago drill wave had just ended. So New York took that energy, imported those drill beats from the UK and made Brooklyn Drill. And before anyone outside of New York knew who Pop Smoke or the rest of the Wu rappers were, it was the Chos who had the strong movement with the Blickies. Kodak Black was out there in Brooklyn often with the Blickies, showing them love early on. Oh now Kodak even signed 22G's The General Blicky to a label deal, basically solidifying the chose in the music industry. 22G's came out with the song Suburban, which did really well, but it led to a bunch of diss track responses, notably... Y'all was asking me to do a video on this. I ain't, yeah, I don't know why I didn't, but... Still. The direct diss track response from Chef G called No Suburban, which overtook the original in popularity. Of course, Chef G is a crip from Flatbush. His crew has been warring with GDs for quite some time, as is the trend in New York right now. And Chef G himself got into fights with his ops at the courthouse. As y'all can see in the video, your boy ran up and got punched up. Him and it was two of them, both of them. Punch both of them. Boot, 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 boot. Your boy ran up and got done up in court. How you gonna run up and get done up on your own life? And he got into a big brawl with one of the most popular members of the Blickies named Nick Blicky, who actually stabbed Chef G in the head. Damn. Hey, yo. Tune in, tune in. Everybody tune in. Yo, what the fuck be going up? Hey, bro, you New York niggas is different. He stabbed his own nigga in the head? What the fuck is... Okay, bro. Let's just keep... Hey, carry on. And everybody tune in. Everybody tune in. This is... This, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much now. <laughs> now, Nick Blicky himself had a lot of songs bubbling in the underground with 4 million views, 2 million views. Like, his career was getting hot, but he was also getting into shootouts with Woos in Brooklyn for whatever reason. Couldn't just focus on his career. And just four months ago, unfortunately, Nick Blicky was killed. 
443 breaking news out of Brooklyn where a popular rapper was shot and killed overnight. Nick Blixey was uh, discovered with gunshot wounds on Winthrop Street. Tributes poured in from the hip hop world on social media for the Jamaican American artist. Just hours after he posted to IG that he was dropping his first official tape in June, he got shot in the upper body and in the ass with a shotgun seven times. And the video of his body just laying in the streets of Brooklyn surrounded by police. It's it's tr whoever, whoever wanted to get him up out of here, they over exceeded. Seven times with a shoddy? More than likely, that's the most. The most common one is a 12 gauge. 12 gauge, that fat motherfucker. That 20 gauge is a little skinnier. Gonna get the job done, but that fat motherfucker. And if they had that buckshot. Told y'all, boy, I'm a gun nerd, bro. I'm a gun nerd, bro. Bro, they what well, they they doing too much in New York, bro. Tragic. It all happened four blocks away from where he lived in Flatbush. Immediately, the woos took to social media to clown his death. Rest in peace, uh, Nick Blicky, who just got killed. Yeah, man, shit is crazy. And then now guys is online laughing at each other's death. Like this shit is not cool, man. Like like we shouldn't be laughing and. and Talking about dancing on each other's graves. These are rappers that are from the same borough too. Like, like this shit is ridiculous, man. Of course, the NYPD monitored everything people were saying. Little man, eleven plus eleven got famous off of this and us crips. Fuck y'all thought suburban was an alibi. A lullaby, so shut the fuck up. And admit we just better at every fucking thing. Saying on socials, quote, without question, these are people of interest to us, right? That's directly from the NYPD because they watch everything. And the very next day, Wu neighborhoods like in Brownsville, Canarsie, and Flatbush were targeted for retaliation by the GDs. It was three days in a row of violence. Three Wu members were killed in that week alone. See, Nick Blicky was beloved, right? He had a pretty big following. Even the gangster disciples in Chicago were paying respects to him. People like FBG Duck, rest in peace, and other other FBG folks were listening to his music on IG Live. He's even got a song with Duck, so the gangster disciple Ty is strong from New York to Chicago. And now the Wu rappers are matching that energy with Fabio Foreign going to Chicago, 264th and King Drive. Oh, I didn't even put that together. Or well, at first I didn't know, but after I learned the last video, I didn't even put that together. That's crazy, then I'm all for, so that's why Fabio did the shit with, well I ain't gonna say that's why, but I get it now, I get it now, this shit's deeper than what the fuck I think, I totally get it now, this is the last video of the night bro, I'm tired, hey I get it now though, I get it now of the Gangster Disciple War and basically making a music video with King Von, who he's got beef with all the GDs in Chicago, extremely GDK. Love it here. Oh shit, GDK. I just like, like GK heaven. Now, as for the future of Brooklyn Drill, Pop Smoke is still one of the highest selling artists in America. He's the face of the drill movement even after his passing. Fabio is next in line, but he's got big boots to fill with Pop Smoke's legacy. The fact that his car got shot up a couple months ago in Atlanta is not good news. This year, Bobby Shmurda was supposed to touch ground in December after six years being behind bars, but his parole was denied. Unfortunately, he will not be coming home until 2021. Now the Cho's are still applying pressure, but recently had a big internal drama with Coach the Ghost disowning one of their top rappers, MV Kane, saying he can no longer be GD. The poison is eliminated from the trees. Anybody that's GDK, it's none of that. It's none of that. It's no, you're not playing no GDK, GDK game, no way. You're not tired of disrespect, so he's no longer GD, but... Let us know what's, what's, what's the facts. Let us know. Basically, Kane's been out in Atlanta. His hotel room got robbed. His Instagram hacked. YouTube took down all his music with millions and millions of views deleted. And the hackers, when they got his Instagram, they put up a bunch of disrespectful stuff towards GDs. I don't think that's why he got kicked out of the shows, but people were saying he was causing too much beef, too much drama. So they disowned him. But yeah, man. That's the Brooklyn drill scene. Let me know in the comments what you guys want me to cover next. If you're new, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and I will see you in the next one. 
Man, that shit wild. You, I would have never thought this shit or thought this shit like would be that like. You know what I'm saying? I know it's gang shit, but you know, I, I know GD Crip, Blood. You know what I mean? I know what's going on in Chicago. Kind of got, I kind of got to understand what's going on in, 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 in uh. L.A. Kind of got to gotta understand what's going on in Florida. Florida, they, they ain't, it ain't even about gangs in Florida. It's about hoods. Your hood can have six different gangs in it. Well, some of the niggas is just, they're all the same gang, but it's about hoods down in Florida. Up there, it ain't even about gangs up there in, 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 in New York now. And when I'm thinking, it's about, nigga, motherfucking, um, who you be with? Yo, 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 yo. Yo, 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 you know what I mean? So, who you roll with? I thought it was about your project up in New York. That's what I thought it was. Clearly, I ain't got to understand it. So, you know, it is what it is, though. But, yeah, man. It's your boy snoring, man. I'm gone, man. Man, I'm tired, bro.